Hey guys, my name is Somongri, and I'm bringing you this video to tell you guys my initial thoughts of the new Transformers Dark of the Moon multiplayer. And I played this game probably for about two hours today, and I got about 20, 25 matches in. And it's a pretty unique game. I had a fun time playing this game. I'm not going to give you a review or anything of it yet. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about what I've learned. If you played the last one, War for Cybertron, you know there's four classes. In this one, they renamed them. So there's a hunter, a scout, a commander, and a warrior. And the commander would be like the leader. The hunter would be like the scientist. The scout is the scout from the old one. And the warrior is like the soldier. So each class is pretty unique. There's a couple things they changed in this game from the last one. The kill streaks are all the same regardless of what character you choose. So that provides a little bit more balance. Uh, I guess the Nucleon Shock Cannon was pretty overpowered in the last one for the scientist kill streak. So I guess changing the kill streaks and making them more balanced comes for maybe a better balanced game. They also changed some of the game modes, or actually they took away some of the game modes. They took away Power Struggle, they took away Countdown to Extinction, and they took away Capture the Capture the Node one. can't remember what that was exactly called. But they took away those, and I was really disappointed to see that they took away those, because now there's only three game modes. There's Team Deathmatch, Regular Deathmatch, which is like a free-for-all, and Conquest, which I don't really care for too much. It's like a domination style. But, I'm so I was pretty sad to see that go, because I my favorite two types were Countdown to Extinction, and Power Struggle was my number one overall favorite, so I'm sad to see those go away. But this game offers some pretty cool new features. Uh, like, if you were to select an Autobot Scout, and you, let's say you pick Sideswipe for your guy, and then you pick a Decepticon for, you know, your Scout, it depends, like, which character skin you select, well, you'll have a different primary weapon for each skin, and a different primary ability for each skin. So being the same Scout class, like, if you pick your Scout class 1, and you're an Autobot, you're going to have a different character with a different gun and a different primary ability than if you were on the Decepticon side and you picked your Scout Class 1. So each character has their own primary weapon and primary gun. So that's kind of cool. I mean, that adds a cool aspect to uh, different characters you can use, and there's different weapons, so that's pretty sweet. And then everybody can pick from a secondary weapon, a secondary ability, and then there's also upgrades, which look to be all the same to me so far, which are kind of just like black armor and uh, I think there's a, possibly a martyr down. maybe each class has a one special set I'll have to double check on that maybe each class has one special upgrade for their secondary upgrade for specifically for that class but uh, don't quote me on that right away now I can't remember but I did play a bunch and had a good time the commander is probably the easiest to pick up and play with right away. It's the strongest. It's kind of like the leader of the last one, so it does a lot of cool different. It has a lot of cool different things, like uh, like if you're Optimus Prime, you have a shoulder gun that you can bring up on your shoulder, and you get like maybe like three or four shots off with that gun, and it's a really strong gun. It's a cool weapon. And like Megatron, he has the drain ability this time, and also there's different ones. Like some of the scouts can turn invisible. The other scout has a whirlwind, which you seen in the video here. I'm, this is just a video on some scout highlights that I just put together real quick. I actually played more with the commander, but then at the end I kind of played with the scout and I actually really enjoyed the scout. He's a little weaker, but he's pretty fun to play with. So, I guess I played this game for, like I said, about 20 games. I'm liking it so far. A couple downfalls to me are the environment. I mean, there's no double jump, so sometimes it's hard to get around the environment. I'd like the War for Cybertron environment. It was real fast-paced, quick. So that's, you know, that's a little bit of a downfall, but I mean, this is a whole new game, it's supposed to be a whole new experience, so that's pretty cool. And I'm enjoying it this far, and I have pretty much nothing but positive to talk about, except for that one environment. Uh, the plane, the jet, he's, I have, I've worked with him a little bit, he's probably the least upgraded of mine, he's a level 5, and my scout to 8, my commander is a 20. And then my warrior is about a 12 or so. The warrior is really strong. He's really good. He now has the war cry ability versus like the leader in this one. So I'm still unlocking everything and I'm still getting new abilities and stuff like that. But it's pretty fun. I just wanted to give you guys my initial thoughts and some scout gameplay highlights here. So I hope you enjoyed my video. 
Uh, leave a comment down in the comment section and let me know what you guys think about this game so far. Also, rate the video and subscribe if you guys want to see some more Transformers videos because they will be coming at you. Alright, have a good day, you guys.